This is a working siphon. Unaided by any machine, liquid is moving through a hose from one container to another. The forces driving this process are complex and interesting. Let's investigate. Start by sitting a cup full of water on a block and an empty cup on the table. Position a hose so that it connects both cups. I colored the water to make it easier to follow this process. To start the siphon, we need to fill the hose with liquid. To do this, insert a pipette into the hose. Squeezing the bulb forces air out of the tube, creating bubbles. Slowly releasing the bulb, we see liquid moving into the tube. We might say that the pipette is sucking liquid into the tube. Actually, the liquid is being pushed into the tube by the external air pressure. When we release the bulb, a partial vacuum appeared. External air pressure pushes water toward this vacuum. To start the siphon, remove the pipette while holding the end of the tube below the level of the liquid. It is important to keep this end of the tube below the liquid level or the liquid will run back into the upper cup. Once started, the liquid will continue to flow. One of the surprising things about this is that the liquid actually flows uphill as it exits the upper cup. This process requires both air pressure and gravity. If we look at the siphon in its start position, we see that the column of liquid in the tube on the left is much shorter than the column of liquid in the tube on the right. The column of liquid on the right is heavier than the shorter column. Pulled by gravity, it starts to fall, flowing towards the lower cup, pulling water from the upper cup with it. This flow continues until one of two things happen. Either the liquid is all removed from the upper cup, or an equilibrium is reached. This occurs when the liquid level in each cup is the same. This siphon has stopped flowing. Equilibrium has been reached. The level is the same in each cup. When the siphon starts, the long column of liquid weighs more than the short column. When the two columns have the same vertical height, forces are balanced and the flow stops. Sitting both cups on the tabletop, we can see the siphon starting to flow, stopping when both cups are at the same level. There is another question. Why does the column of water stay together? Why doesn't it break in the middle and flow in two directions? Air pressure is responsible for this. If the column pulled apart, that would create a vacuum and air pressure would push the column back together. If you drilled a small hole in the siphon tube at the top, this would introduce air and the liquid would flow in two directions. If you're teaching about liquids, there are some interesting things you can do with siphons. Mixing two colors with a siphon creates some dramatic effects. You can create a siphon stair with a number of blocks, starting each section of the siphon in sequence. You'll find more science-related activities and videos at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the projects link.